Hello everyone and welcome back to the Blackfield Book Club and another edition of my essential film reviews collection and I bring you my rambling musings on a favourite film of mine of recent years entitled Captain Fantastic, directed by Matt Ross. Written and directed by Matt Ross, I originally watched Captain Fantastic with a completely blank slate, no trailers, reviews or buzz of the film and fell in love with it immediately and having recently watched this yet again for the purposes of this article I fell in love with the film all over again. There are a myriad of reasons why Ross's simple yet charmingly immersive direction, a deeply affecting storyline with a cathartic payoff, a barnstorming central performance from Viggo Mortensen supported brilliantly by his troop of monkey butts whose individual performances continually brought tears to my eyes in a highly original story of faith, love, the strength of the family unit and a free individual expression. This is set against the continuing question of whether the family, and more specifically Mortensen's central character, is doing what is right or whether it's through self-righteous indignation at a world he and his wife have deliberately left behind in order to raise their children off the grid of mainstream society in an Eden-like secluded forest, where the children are rigorously and meticulously homeschooled, taught self-sufficiency, survival skills, politics, philosophy and physical and mental well-being. This is a joint parental decision, however, following his wife's suicide, Ben, Viggo Mortensen, and his family embark on a road trip into the very outside world they have been set apart from. The juxtaposition and clash of cultures between the family's self-sufficient world and the world around them is brilliantly written and realised through director Ross. With the family on board their trusty green bus named Steve, they travel through an alienating world they cannot comprehend en route to their beloved's funeral. Oscar nominated in 2017 for his role as family patriarch Ben, Viggo Mortensen is front and centre in every way here. It's a superb central performance of determination against the odds and at times a powerhouse acting display but what shouldn't be overlooked are the more subtle nuances of Mortensen's portrayal as his looks of encouragement, pride and conjoling and guidance of his children are masterful and captured brilliantly by director Ross. It's also never overplayed into grandstanding and thus taking the audience out of the story, for Ben is opinionated to the nth degree and always tells his children the truth on every subject, be it their mother's death, their family missions, or the impact of Big Pharma, drugs, sex, religion and faith in everyone's lives. His brutal honesty is refreshing, if a little grating, but should you feel the latter as well as the former, then his performance is even more stellar and comprehensive. Ben is raising his children to be self-sufficient and reliant on themselves as unique entities with freedom of expression of paramount importance, but it can be equally argued that he has made them and raised them in the image of himself and his beliefs. Family discourse is immensely encouraged, but every one of the six children are devoted to their father and family with the rare exceptions being outbursts from the two older male members of the family, reinforcing another of the film's numerous themes, that of the father-son dynamic. All six uniquely named children are portrayed brilliantly throughout the film, with a Charlie Shotwell as Nye, Shree Cooks in her gas mask as Zaja, or the older girls Annalise Basso as Vesper, or Samantha Eisler as Kyla. However, the two strongest and pivotal performances fought are Nicholas Hamilton as Relian and George Mackay as Bodavan. Firstly, Nicholas Hamilton, who, who in his role as Relian excellently portrays a silent screaming of rage at what he perceives to be his father's inaction and inability to help his mother through her troubles and desperately wanting to rebel from the unorthodox family life he seemingly endures whilst George Mackay follows up his superb performances in Sunshine on Leith and Pride with another here as Bodavan. The oldest of the children he surreptitiously applies to and is accepted into a number of universities 
and is an immensely talented and well-read individual, but also speaks for the group of children in a way describing himself as a freak and in one of the film's most iconic lines of dialogue and the film is awash with eminently quotable lines unless it comes out of a fucking book I don't know anything about anything which in essence highlights one of the many through lines of the film all six children are happy, healthy, physically fit, incredibly well read and self-sufficient but they have no understanding of the real world and the world surrounding them exemplified as they look on aghast and mouths wide open at their fellow Americans in a bank or a shopping mall. They are socially awkward and alien to the world around them and crucially its inhabitants as they struggle to interact in any meaningful way with the world outside of their close-knit familial unit of seven people. This comes into even sharper focus when their road trip brings them into contact with even members of their own extended family as they again look on dumbfounded at their cousin's dependency on their computer games and electronic gadgets and even the suburban lifestyle enjoyed by their auntie Harper, Catherine Han and uncle Dave, Steve Zahn. Cameo roles fall to Erin Moriarty as Claire, Missy Pyle as her mother Ellen and Anne Dowd as the children's grandmother Abigail and a thunderous performance from the brilliant Frank Langella as the children's grandfather Jack should not be overlooked. With Leslie Trin Miller coming back to comfort husband Ben in his dreams in some of the film's most affecting scenes, by the time Captain Fantastic reaches its denouement, you may well have shed an occasional tear or two, as well as many laughs, chuckles and smiles along the way, as well as maybe singing along with the family at their get-togethers or humming along with the film's tremendous music score from Alex Summers. Captain Fantastic is equal parts joyous and melancholic with a challenging story that may well resonate with more of us than we care to admit. I may be biased, being as I rate this one of my favourite films of 2016, but this film is truly a marvel. But regardless, always remember folks, power to the people, stick it to the man. And that was Captain Fantastic, directed by Matt Ross, brought to you by Stephen Blackford in a Radiohead t-shirt. Writing and reading, pointless, but spoiler free, film reviews since 2012. And I'll leave you in peace and in solidarity. And I thank you so much for watching. Peace everyone.